Now, those who are born in the month of June, you should be the only one standing now. If you are born in the month of June, let me hear you shout hallelujah. My Father, my God, I commit all your children born in the month of June into your hands. In a very, very special way, make their lives full of praises. Make their lives full of testimonies. Make their lives full of joy. Stand by them, support them, strengthen them, make them victorious, give them brand new beginning, O oh Lord, and answer all their prayers by fire. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Children of June, shout another hallelujah. And then you may please be seated. How many of you here would like to know the direct line of Daddy Gio? Uh, so many people. <laughs> now, forget Daddy Gio. He's an ordinary human being. Most of the time, his phone is off because he's praying. How many of you would like to know the direct line of the Almighty God? That young man gave you the direct line of the Almighty God tonight. <laughs> so you may not understand why I start every program by saying, let somebody shout. I just want to say glory be to God. Psalm 18, from verse 1 to 3. Psalm 18, 1 to 3. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler, and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. We're talking about victory through praise. And I want to spend the next few minutes, five minutes or a little more, to talk to those who are yet to be born again before we go to the bigger aspect of the program. God loves praise. Psalm 22 verse 3, Psalm 22 verse 3 says, He inhabits praise. Praise to God is what water is to the fish. He dwells in praise. You could almost say, if you take praise away from God, there will be a problem. That's why he surrounds himself constantly with praise. And I will want to, when you get home, to study Revelation chapter 19. Read from verse 1 to 6. Revelation 19, 1 to 6. You will see 
heaven is constantly roaring with praise. Shouts of hallelujah from one end to the other of heaven. Everybody just praising God. Revelation chapter 19 from verse 1 to 6. You will keep on hearing great voices all roaring. Hallelujah. 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 Almost nonstop. The seraphims, the seraphims are special angels created for making music. In Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 to 3, Isaiah 6, verse 1 to 3, you find that the seraphims are constantly saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, the whole earth is full of this glory. There was never a time when God said to this seraphim, can't you keep quiet for a while? No, God inhabits praise. He loves praise. In Revelation chapter 5, verse 11 to 14, Revelation 5, 11 to 14, the Bible says that the angels that are praising God are thousands of thousands now thousands of thousands means millions and then ten thousand of ten thousands that's talking about billions of angels the angels so numerous that the writer of the, of the book of revelation just cannot tell you the figure so he said thousands of thousands and ten thousands of ten thousand angels combined with all the creatures in heaven and on earth. They were crying and worshiping, praising God. The Almighty God loves praise so much that he says in Jeremiah 33 verse 11, Jeremiah 33, verse 11. He said, when you are joyful, what you should bring to him is sacrifice of praise. He loves praise. He wants you to praise him. As some of the children have already told us, we just wants you to keep on praising, praising, because he can't praise himself, so he needs you to join. It's amazing that with all the angels praising him in heaven, he's still looking for more praise. And even if you have to praise him sacrificially, he said, bring the sacrifice of praise. You know, when I want to take Thanksgiving offering, I've always told you, it's not how much you give to him that matters when you are saying thank you. It's how you do it. He wants you to praise him. He wants you to dance. He wants you to rejoice. But as much as God wants praise, he hates any form of sacrifice coming from a sinner. Proverbs 15 verse 8. Proverbs 15 verse 8. He said, The sacrifice of a wicked, of the wicked, is an abomination to God. God does not want a praise coming from the wicked. When he says abomination, I think I've explained the word to you before. But just in case you were not there when I said it. What is an abomination? It's something that when you, when you hear about it, your, your, your body will crawl. It, it, something so repulsive. You, you, you don't even want to hear it. It's called an abomination. And I told, this, told you the story of what happened when two armies were fighting. 
don't let me mention the name of the country. The government on one side, the opposite, opposite side will always be called rebels. And it happened that there was a particular village where the government forces were for some time before the opposition took it over from the government forces. And the soldiers who took over from the government forces wanted to punish the villagers for supporting their enemies. And one of the things they said was that they took the pregnant women and with the bayonet of their gods, they ripped open their belly and brought out the babies. That's an abomination, something that makes your body crawl and say, how can somebody do something so bad? That is how God feels when a sinner begins to praise him. He doesn't want to hear the praise of a sinner. It's an abomination to him. That's why you understand Psalm 7 verse 11. Psalm 7 verse 11 says that God is angry with the wicked every day. Every day. Because how can you be praising me when you know you belong to my enemy? Hypocrisy. God doesn't like it at all. He said, why are you calling me Lord when you are not doing the things that I command you? Why? It's mockery. When you belong to the devil and you say you are praising God, you are mocking God and God can't take it. It's a witch or, or even the category of witches. Was following Paul and Silas about and say, hey, these are men of God who are showing us the way of salvation. It was mockery. And the man of God turned around and rebuked the spirit. When you hear people shouting hallelujah and you are not yet born again and you join in shouting, you irritate God. That's the truth of the matter. That's why that young man said, before you praise him, you better know where you stand in God. If you are not a child of God, don't praise him. And we want to praise God tonight. We want to spend that some quality time praising God tonight. Because when we praise him, Things will happen. I've told you before in the past, when prayers fail, praise we not. So before we go on to praising Him, if you know that you are not yet sure of your salvation, please come and give your life to Jesus Christ first. Because God hates the praise coming from a sinner. It is mockery to him. So if you are not yet born again, and yet you want to praise God, come and surrender your life to him now. Let his blood wash you away. Let you become a child of God who would then qualify to open your mouth and praise the almighty God. So I'm going to come from 1 to 10. If you are not sure of your salvation and you want to make sure, before I say 10, come and stand before me. And then I will pray with you and the blood of Jesus will wash away your sin. And then you become a child of God. And then your praise will become acceptable to him. So I'm counting now one two you say now who is praising God is mocking God and you don't want to mock God 
So give your life to Jesus. Let his blood wash away your sins. And then your praise will become acceptable to him. Three. Remember, God cannot clap for himself. So he needs people to do the clapping for him. And when you are clapping for him, don't do it as if he's begging you. Do it voluntarily. Four. Five. Six. Seven. those of you who have come forward and those of you on the way and those of you on the way keep coming talk to the almighty god now and ask him to have mercy on you ask him to save your soul ask him to wash you clean with his blood and to write your name in his book of life tell him that from now on you will serve him tell him to become not just your savior but your lord that will obey him from now on cry unto him i said lord i've come for you to save my soul please do so tonight and those of you on the way hurry up keep coming the rest of us let's stretch our hands towards these uh, new brothers and sisters and intercede for them that the one who saved our souls will save their own souls also pray for them for a minute or two let's 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 intercede for them now Let's pray that the Almighty God will have mercy on them, that His blood will wash away their sins, that He will save their souls today, and He will accept them into the family of God. And those of you on the way, keep coming. Just make sure you get there before I finish praying, and that will be okay. Thank you, Father. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. You are not late yet. Just make sure you get there before I finish praying. Because I want to pray for salvation now. Thank you, Father. Keep coming, keep coming. I wait 10 seconds for you. Keep coming. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Savior, I want to say thank you very much for your word. I want to thank you for this, your children, who have decided to come and surrender their life to you. Please, Lord, every one of them that has come to you today, receive in Jesus' name. Let your blood wash away their sins. Save their souls, O oh Lord. Write their names in the book of life. And please, Lord, let them remain yours forever in Jesus' name. And anytime they call on you from now on, Father, please answer them by fire in Jesus' name. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' name.
mighty name we have prayed now before I proceed to the uh, main message I want to show you a clip and uh, just watch the clip when we finish I will tell you you yourself will probably know why before I tell you so let's have the clip please how are you I'm fine thank you sir what is your name my name is Ibuku Ibuku what my Ibuku how old are you four years old four years old what is the name of your church? The name of my church is Redeem Christian Church of God, Victory House. Victory House. Okay, do you know your Bible? Yes. Do you know your Bible? Yes. Okay, Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 says what? In the beginning, God created heaven and the earth. Mark chapter 12 verse 31. Says, love your neighbor as yourself. John chapter 1 verse 1. John chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and God was the Word. John chapter 14 verse 14 says, John chapter 14 verse 14 says, If you accept my name, I will give to you. Philippians chapter 4 verse 4. Philippians chapter Philippians chapter 4 verse 4 says, Rejoice, Lord, always. Again, I will say rejoice. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same as today, today and forevermore. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 2 says, Honor your father and your mother. First Peter chapter 1 verse 16 says, Be ye holy for I am holy. Revelation chapter 3 verse 11 says, Behold, I am come quickly. All first what you have, that no one may take your crown. Good. Clap for yourself. Okay, read from Genesis to Malachi for me. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First Samuel, Second Samuel, First King, Second King, First Chronicles, Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalm, Proverbs. Exorcist, Saul, Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentation, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Now, Obako, Zephaniah, Agai, Zachariah, Malachi. Okay, who is Jesus? Jesus is my Lord and personal Savior. Spare Jesus for me. J E S U S Jesus. Clap for yourself. Good girl. Hmm. Number one. If you have nothing at all to praise God for, praise God for children. Number two, praise God for children teachers. Number three, praise God for good parents. Number four, praise God for the redeemed Christian Church of God. And then look at that child. When she got to Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. He said, what is it in Philippians 4, chapter 4? He said, rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say, 
Rejoice. That's exactly how you should praise God. Anytime you want to praise Him, demonstrate. Do it with everything in you. I want you to stand on your feet and just praise God like a child. Rejoice in the Lord. Give Him praise. Give Him adoration. Do it like a baby. Do it like a child. Show Him that He's your daddy. Rejoice in the Lord. And again I say, rejoice. Come on, we are all children in the house of the ancient of days. Rejoice in the Lord. And again I say, rejoice. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Please be seated. Praise draws God like a magnet draws iron. In John chapter 4, verse 23 to 24, John 4, verse 23 to 24, The Almighty God, through the Lord Jesus Christ, said, He is a spirit, and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth, and He seeks such to worship Him. God is seeking for worshippers. He is drawn to worship us. So, when you praise God, God the Father draws near. When God the Father is drawing near, the first thing he does, like one of my children said, is that he wants to leave his throne in heaven and come to you. And for him to come to you to leave his throne in heaven to come to you the first thing he has to do is he stands up and psalm 68 verse 1 to 3 psalm 68 verse 1 to 3 says let god arise and his enemies be scattered he said those that hate him will flee before him and those who don't flee will be melted by fire. Because you see, the Bible says in Psalm 97 verse 3, Psalm 97 verse 3, he said, a fire goes before him and burns up his enemies round about him. If only you can praise God to the level that he can stand up, just stand up, your problems will be over. You know, he made a promise in Isaiah 41, verse 10 to 13. Isaiah 41, verse 10 to 13. When he said, I will help you, I will hold you by your right hand, I will help you. He said, you will seek for your enemies and you will find them. I want to prophesy to someone. As incredible as it may sound, before the end of this month, there will be no enemy left in your life. You, you see, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 16, Proverbs 16 verse 7, it says, when a man's ways please God, he causes his enemies to be at peace with him. You wonder what exactly does that passage mean? There are various ways God can cause your enemies to be at peace with you. One, 
it can cause your enemies to destroy themselves. Second Chronicles chapter 20 from verse 20 to 25. Second Chronicles 20 verse 20 to 25. If your enemies are busy fighting themselves, you'll be at peace. You will be at peace. If all those who want to destroy you, if some, suddenly God sends confusion into their midst and they are busy killing themselves, you'll be enjoying peace. He could do that or he could paralyze them physically psalm 23 verse 5 psalm 23 verse 5 he said thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies he he neutralized them he made sure they can't even move or he could paralyze them mentally Exodus chapter 14 from verse 13 to 28. Exodus 14 from verse 13 to 28. Moses said, just look at the enemies very well. He said, because the enemies you see tonight, you will never see them again forever. And he explained, he said, because the Lord will fight for you. And then, when all of a sudden, when all of a sudden, the Red Sea opened, and the children of Israel began to go through the Red Sea, if God has not paralyzed the thinking of the Egyptians, they would not have followed them into the middle of the sea. But he paralyzed them mentally. There is an English proverb, whosoever God wants to destroy, he will first of all make mad. And then, he will arrest them so that they will never be able to trouble you again. Second Kings chapter 6 from verse 8 to 23. Second Kings 6 8 to 23. The enemy came to arrest Elisha and Elisha arrested them. He arrested them, got them fed, and send them back to their master and the bible said they never came back i don't know what method god will use whether by causing your enemies to fight themselves whether by paralyzing them physically or paralyzing them mentally or arresting them whatever method he wants to use in the name that's above every other name very soon you will shout victory at last so how do i get god the father to draw near very simple just follow the example of the juju musicians in those days before i was born again we used to attend parties and the musician will come before the the dancing begins and will collect the names of those of you who are there when he begins to play he will begin to call your name one by one and then he will begin to call you what you are not and say you are emergency contractor you are this you are that and some you are looking at me as if you don't know what i'm talking about that's okay <laughs> thank god for jesus christ 
And as he begins to call you those names, big names, something within you will say, get up and go and paste him with, spray him with Naira. Something within you will say, you borrow this money, the money in your pocket, you borrowed it and you tell that thing, shut up. When I get home, I will sort that one out. They praise you until you get up. How do I praise God till he gets up? I begin to call him his names. He is Jehovah El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one. Genesis 17, verse 1. Genesis 17, verse 1. He is the I am that I am. Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. Exodus 3, verse 14. He is the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Exodus chapter 3, verse 15. Exodus 3, verse 15. He is the most high. He is the almighty. Psalm 91, verse 1. Psalm 91, verse 1. He is the one who is higher than the highest. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 8. Ecclesiastes 5, verse 8. Is the one who sits enthroned above. Isaiah 66, verse 1. Isaiah 66, verse 1 says, Heaven is his throne. Is the Holy One of Israel. Psalm 71, verse 22. Psalm 71, verse 22. And then in the text that I read to you, in Psalm 18, verses 1 and 2, Psalm 18, verses 1 and 2, David said, It's my rock, my fortress, my God, my deliverer, my strength, my trust, my buckler the horn of my salvation my high tower i'm going to ask you to do something in a moment and i want to remind you of something i've i probably have told you a couple of times before i told you my background my father was not the richest man in the world. <laughs> That's putting it mildly. And yet he had two wives. And quite a few children. And there are some of us who just managed to get into school. Whenever it is time to pay school fees, he will pick a quarrel with the wives so they won't be able to come to him for, for money but my mother had a way of getting my school fees she would come very early in the morning and I was sleeping with my father on his mat and they would begin to eulogize my father you are the son of so and so you are the son of so and so. Your father has a farm that when the bird flies all day long, they won't be able to reach the end of the farm. I never discover where that farm is. <laughs> when your father threw a party, he fed the army, he fed the civilian. Uh, and if she would just go on. Most of the things she would, she would be saying in those days, Hey, I just wondered, little boy over there in the who is 
is she talking about? But my father loved it. She will be going on and my father will say, you are calling on a man. It will be well with you in this house. Uh, and then she, she will continue. The, the husband of my head, the owner of my head, the husband of my chest, the this and this. And very soon, my father is the one who will say, what can I do for you today? Ah, eh, we know things are hard, but you know, uh, your child is ready for school and uh, my father will say don't worry we will find the money and she my mother will eulogize him until he will say don't worry and then he will go out and borrow the money because he hasn't got the money i want you to eulogize god just for a few minutes tell him you are Jehovah El Shaddai. You are the Almighty God. You are higher than the highest. You are greater than the greatest. There is no one like you. You are the I am that I am. You are my husband. You are my provider. You are my all in all. Oh, there's no one like you. You are my deliverer. You are my source. You are my joy, you are my strength, you are the horn of my salvation, you are my buckler, you are my trust. Oh, there's no one like you. Heaven is your throne, the earth is your footstool. All power belongs to you. There's no one like you. You logizing, praising. Call him by his name. That's what David did. And he never lost a battle. Praise him. Call him by his name. Tell him you are Jehovah El Shaddai. You are I am that I am. You are the ancient of days. You are the rock of ages. You are the holy one of Israel. You are the lion of the tribe of Judah. I'll praise you. There's no one like you. Call him by his name. Let him stand up for you. Once he stands for you, all oh, the enemies will scatter. The enemies will scatter. The enemies will scatter. Praise him. Give him glory. Just call him by his name. King of kings. Lord of lords. The I am that I am. The ancient of days. The lion of the tribe of Judah. The holy one of Israel. I praise your name. I give you glory. I give you honor. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. May the Almighty God rise up for you today in Jesus' name. Please be seated.
And what happens when God is and draws near? Because I said, when you praise him, he draws near. When Jesus draws near, what will happen? Because Jesus is greatly attracted to praise. When you read Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52, Mark 10, 46 to 52, in the story of Bartimaeus, it would be amazing to you that in a multitude, he heard the cry of a beggar. But what he actually heard that caused him to stand still is a statement. Jesus, thou son of David. <laughs> That's what that was. That was the name. That was the game changer. Ah, somebody knows me here. He knows me all the way to my root. Ah, go and bring him. Remember, there was many people trying to silence that man, but the hear of God, we hear praise. No matter the crowd. And when he draws near when God is and draws near darkness has to go why John chapter 9 verse 5 John 9 verse 5 Jesus Christ said I am the light of the world when he drew near that day Batmos was no longer in darkness because the Bible says in John chapter 1 verses 4 and 5 John 1 4 and 5 that the light shines in darkness and darkness cannot overcome it if you can praise jesus so that he can draw near you darkness will have to let you go not only that the day he drew near to batmels that was the last day he ever begged doesn't matter what your situation may be looking like right now in the name that's above every other name in the name of jesus christ you won't have to beg again when god the son draws near he turns your enemies to your servants the very people <clears throat> thank you father the lord said this the person concerned we understand he asked me to tell you storms come storms go and your present storm will soon pass away thank you father I want to say amen to this before I tell you because somebody, God said there's somebody here tonight he said very soon your singing will be louder than that of others when your praise attracts Jesus he can turn your enemies to your servants and i like that because the very people who were trying to silence batmels were these very people god sent to go and bring him very soon in the name that's above every other name you will stand on this altar and say this is the fellow who tried to destroy me now 
is my messenger now Jesus loves children especially I'm sure you know that why because in Matthew chapter 21 verse 15 to 16 Matthew 21 15 to 16 he told us out of the mouth of babes and sucklings God has perfected praise children know how to praise God perfectly in total abandon if we have any problems brethren it's simply because we think we are too old to praise God like a child when that child was doing the recitation the child that I show you in the clip she doesn't care who is looking Rejoice in the Lord again. I say rejoice. It, that child was enjoying herself. And I saw that clip. I said, Oh my God. How long before we, so called adults, will realize that before the one who is called the ancient of days, we are children. There's nobody among us here today who is 100 years old. Nobody. And a thousand years is like a day before God. If only we can approach him like a little child, like a little child. Like these children who came to praise God. And some people were trying to stop the ch children the Bible said Jesus rebuked them. There's a big lesson in that one. Number one, if you don't want to praise God, don't bother those who want to praise Him. Because if you are not praising God and you try to stop those who are praising Him, He will rebuke you. And the rebuke of God can be very terrible. You know the story. David danced before God. The wife looked at him and said, Here, you call yourself a king. Look at the way you are dancing. The Bible said, She died barren. She's the only barren fellow in the Bible who died barren because she criticized the one praising God. And not only that, when Jesus brought the children he said bring them bring them he did something he carried them in the in his hands how many of you will want god to just pick you up today and just carry you carry you carry you carry you oh my god several years ago I was burdened by several things. Problems in the church, problem this way, problem that way, uh, problem from unfaithful brethren, uh, problems from deceivers. And I sat down discouraged. And suddenly I heard God say, My son, don't worry. I am carrying you. Ah. If he's carrying me, then he's carrying my loads. If he's carrying me, he's carrying my problems. I pray today for someone here to from today onward, the Almighty God will carry you. That he can only carry children. He never carried any adults. No. 
when Peter said, if you are the one walking on water, ask me to come over to you. And he said, come. And Peter came out of the boat and was walking towards him, took his eyes off Jesus and began to sing. And he said, help me. Jesus just pulled, held him by the hand. And together they walked back into the boat. He didn't carry him. Why? He's already an adult. Too big to be carried. If only we can approach praise from that perspective, from now on. If we begin to praise God like a child, let anybody say what they like. God will begin to carry us. You know, one of his name is the burden bearer. I pray for every one of you here today in the name that's above every other name. God will begin to carry you. Not only did he carry them, he blessed them. Ha! Ah, when you know the importance of divine blessing, if that's all that you get from God for praising him, you don't need more. You can go to the scriptures. He said to Abraham, I will bless you. Genesis 12, verse 1 to 3. Genesis 12, verse 1 to 3. Abraham had nothing when God said, I will bless you. So, a few years later, the servant of Abraham said, God has blessed my master greatly. Greatly. Now, he has silver, he has gold, he has cattle, he has everything. Because God blessed him. Many a times when I'm walking about in the night and some people see me and they begin to run, when, so I turn to them and I say, God bless you. Those who are intelligent among them will go back, rejoice, say, hey, glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. But you see, see some people, Daddy, pray for me. I already said, God bless you. There's no prayer greater than that. Because when God blesses you, all the hosts of heaven will come and support you. Everything on earth, everything underneath the earth will be working for your success. I say in the name that's above every other name, God bless you. I've given the example before. Gen in, in Genesis 27, verse 38 to 40. Genesis 27, 38 to 40. The only blessing that Esau got was a leftover blessing. He said to his father, uh, Don't you have any blessing left? Mm, the father said, Well, let me give you a little bit that is left over. A little bit that is left over. Huh. Not long after that one. <laughs> when Jacob sent to Esau, I'm coming home. This messenger came back and said, Esau is coming to you with 400 men. Just a little God bless you. Now, he has 400 men as his bodyguards. I tried to explain that one to my children. I said the first time a president came to Redemption Camp, to Holy Ghost Congress, because of the security risk involved, open space, hundreds of thousands of people, he came with 250 bodyguards 250 but he's president he so had 400 so who is bigger in the two and all he so got was leftover blessing 
when you praise God the way you ought to praise him Jesus will carry you in his hand he will lay his mighty hands on your head and bless you today in the name that's above every other name I represent the Lord Jesus Christ and I decree God bless you When you worship Jesus the way you ought to worship him, you get victory. Victory over incurable disease, victory over legion of demons, victory over premature death. You just get victory upon victory. Now, because of time, what happens when the Holy Spirit draws near? Thank you, Father. The Lord asked me to remind somebody. If he asked me to remind you, he means it, but I've told you this one before. That between any two days, there is an evening. And he asked me to tell you, you might be passing through an evening now, but your new day is very near. Oh, thank you, my father. Now, this one is for me. <laughs> because the Lord said, there's someone here today, he said, the day is near when pleasant things will begin to happen to you in twos. When the Holy Spirit draws near, because the Holy Spirit is also attracted to praise, when he draws near, he shakes all the shakables. When the Holy Spirit draws near, he shakes all the shakables. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 23 to 31. Acts 4, 23 to 31. The apostles gathered in a room and they began to praise God. Oh, you made the heaven, you made the earth, etc., etc. Et and the Spirit of God came in and shook the house. Anything the enemy have planted in you, planted in your house, planted in your church, planted in your place of work, shall be shaken loose tonight in Jesus' name. Because when the Holy Spirit comes in, he comes in like a rushing mighty wind. If you can just praise God, so that the Holy Spirit can come in, it will come in as a rushing mighty wind. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. Acts 2, 1 to 4. So he either comes in as a rushing mighty wind, or he comes in as fire. When you attract the Holy Spirit through praise, and he comes in, he comes in like fire. And the fire will begin to burn everything that is hindering you. Judges 15, from verse 14 to 15. Judges 15, verse 14 to 15. They brought something bound to the Philistines. And they began to rejoice, thinking they've got him. The Holy Spirit came down mightily. And the Bible said the ropes that bound him we are burnt as if they come in contact with fire. I don't know what the enemy had used thus far to limit your progress. But as we praise God tonight, the Holy Spirit will come down. And that fire of God will destroy every yoke in your life. 
So when the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, become attracted to you through praise, there's something happens. According to Psalm 67, verse 5 to 7, Psalm 67, 5 to 7, that one of my sons mentioned earlier on, he said, let the people praise thee. Oh God, let all the people praise thee. Then he says, certain things will begin to happen. Number one, the earth will begin to yield an increase. Suddenly, the, the ground become fertile. Do you know if you praise God? If you're a farmer and you sing praises while you are farming, your harvest will be bounteous. And then he went on to say, God, even our God will bless us. But he went for that to say, yeah, God will bless us and all the earth shall fear him. Do you know that there are blessings that can frighten your enemies? Oh, if you read Genesis chapter 26 from verse 12 to 16, Genesis 26. Thank you, Father. The Lord asked me to tell someone. He said, relax, I will not abandon you. Oh, thank you. In Genesis 26 from verse 12 to 16, when God blessed Isaac, initially the Philistines envied him. But at a stage, the blessing became so much, they became afraid of him. You know, God can so prosper you that your enemies become afraid. That's going to be your testimony very soon. But, and I'm closing now, in that passage, where it says, let the people praise you so that God can bless us fearfully. He included a condition. And the condition is, let all the people praise you. How many people are to praise him? So even if you have to beg the fellow next to you, I say, please, so, if it's only for tonight, join me in praising God. Uh -huh. Because he says, it must be all of us, all of us, all of us. I know you are a gentleman. I know you are a lady. I know you are very important, but, but for God's sake, if it's only just for tonight, in order that God may send down that blessing that will cause my enemies to fear me, kindly join me in praising God. You probably notice in the song we sang, special hymn that we sang, the last verse says, I will sing hallelujah. Then the next line says, Join me in shouting hallelujah. And so I'm going to ask, please, at least because of the rest of us, if you are not used to praising God, try tonight. Because everybody must praise Him. If you are an elder, you can sit down and praise Him. I'm sure He will understand. 
But those of us who are young, for the next 10 to 15 minutes, let us praise God like we have never done before. And let us see what God will do this month. Let's, let's try him and find out whether it is true that it is written. If we will all just praise him, he will bless us and the whole earth will fear him. So if you are young and you are able, please just stand up and begin to praise God and everybody should please do it if you if you if you can't stand you can sit down but you must please praise God and do it loudly don't do it quietly praise him praise him like you've never done before and, and you have you, you are welcome if you want to come before the altar to praise him it's okay by him let's go ahead and praise the almighty god let's worship him until god the father will draw near until god the son will draw near until god the holy spirit will draw near let us praise him let us praise him please join me in praising him magnify his holy name call him by his name adore him do it joyfully do it like little children praise him praise him <laughs>